action. Okay. Things that I want you to do on your computers. First, you have to install Git. What is Git? Git is a code repository. What is a code repository? It's essentially a database, an intelligent directory in which, that's a good thing to say. I never said that before. Git is an intelligent, yeah, Git repository it's an in, is an intelligent directory that keeps track of all the changes that is happening to it. Many different changes. And you can have different types of access to it, which means you can have five people working on the same directory on the same file, and then they merge their code together without overriding each other's work. Okay, or you wrote something, you are doing a project and you found a way to do it and after five days, you say, damn it, that was bad. I want to go where I was exactly five days ago. You can do that. You can roll back your work five days ago. Okay, you can do, you can see, or, or you create a repository on Git. I'm going to tell you how to do it. You, you add me over there as a committer, as a person who can, who can contribute. Then you tell me, Fardat, this is my repository. I had problem in this code. Go together, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to start fixing it, and then I'll save it, and I'm going to say, there you go, it's fixed now. You simply get a diff, and it shows the difference between two codes, exactly what the code was, and what was this commit effects on the code, so you can see exactly what has changed. Okay, it's a beautiful thing. That's the first thing. Number two, that's Git. GitHub is like, what is a website? You can have a website, web page on your computer, right? Your own computer, you can create a web an HTML page on it, right? A website is a, is a place in which you put a web page, right? And you can go to a hosting company and put your page over there. So when you say fardout.com, right? Okay. GitHub is that. GitHub has nothing to do with what Git is. GitHub is a company that hosts Git repositories. Git, by nature, is a distributed program, which means it can clone itself to many instances. So what you do, you create a repository on GitHub, you clone it on your computer at home. Then you start working on the repository. Anybody over here doesn't know what does it mean to clone something? Okay, to clone means to create an exact and identical being copy of, of another being. So essentially, if you make a clone of me, you cannot recognize which one is far that. Okay? Are we okay with this? So that's Bear that in mind. So you clone the repository on GitHub on your local computer. And thank you very much for volunteer. I know you knew what cloning was. You just wanted to see what I'm going to say, which is good. Do that. It's good. I like that. One mark for your next quiz, OK? I'll do that a lot, OK? You have to remember that, OK? So I forget, because I'm going to give you a mark for free. So of course I forget it. But when, you, when the quiz is done and you see your mark, then you can tell me, Farda, you told me I'm good, you got to give me a mark. That I will remember. Then I'm going to add it to you. Okay? So remember, one mark for your first quiz. All right. So, so the, on Git repository, you, you, you clone the Git repository on your local computer. Say you are working on a workshop, and you clone that one on your own local machine. You start working on it, working on it, working on it. Now, when you work on your local computer, now the two clones are different, right? One has work done in it and the other one is not. You can take the information in this repository and push it into the next repository. This is literally what it's called, pushing. So what you do, you add new work to your repository, you commit your work to the local repository, which means saving. So essentially, you add stuff to your repository, you save it into the repository, so you tell to the repository to that smart directory, hey, these files should be traced. You commit it. So now, this repository is out of sync with that one. Now you say, push everything from here to master. So it pushes everything to GitHub. You leave your desktop at home, you come to Seneca, you open up the thing, the computer over here, you load Git, you load uh, Tortoise Git, and you simply go to your repository, 
pull everything on here. Sorry, clone that thing on the computer over here and start working on this. And then when you are done, push it back again. So what happens is that the two repositories were in sync, the one at home and GitHub. You came to school, you cloned it, you worked on it, you pushed the information back. Now your uh, GitHub repository is ahead. It has stuff that your home thing doesn't have, correct? First of all, you delete that clone from the computer at uh, Seneca because if somebody opens it, and you're at fault. Remember that. Always delete your work and hard the machine when you're done so it gets wiped out. Okay? That's very important. Then you go at home. Now you have to pull the information from GitHub to your home, right? But you are not working at GitHub. Right? You're working at home. So you have to do reverse of uh, uh, pushing. So what is the reverse of push? Pull. You're going to pull it out. Pull it down. So it's going to bring everything and add all the modifications to your code. It's not a download. It's a smart download. The same thing with the notes that I put on GitHub. Clone it at home. And as soon as a new lecture comes up, you simply go home. You pull. The new lecture will be pulled to your computer, and you're going to have all the code. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. And I'll give you some samples over here of basic Git commands and using Tortoise Git. I'm going to, little by little, add all these things. Because it's not part of our curriculum, I added over there. I have one news for you, and it's very important. You write a resume, you give it to the thing. Of course, the resume is to just catch the eye of the person who's, who's selecting people, right? So you write some fancy lies in there that I did this and that, and I worked at SpaceX, and I sent that thing to Mars, and I'm you know, inhabiting the Mars and stuff to, to be able to write a for loop for a company, right? You do all these things in your resume, right? They don't care about that. They just see it's beautiful, OK? They take your name, Google your name. You said you did that at Seneca? You, they Google your name and a Seneca afterwards. And pull, what comes up? GitHub. GitHub, thank you. GitHub is an amazing place your name to be at. Put your name, your complete information in GitHub, and make it public. Because the difference between two people is that the one has the, the repository on Git and the one doesn't. The one who has a repository on Git knows how real programming is done, knows what collaboration is. They don't have to sit over there and explain to them what a repository is when they are doing the work. If you know Git, you know everything. They're all the same, potatoes, potatoes. If you learn to drive one car, you can drive another car. It's just the model that is different, right? The basics are the same. So remember that. Ha when you are creating your GitHub account, cat killer is not a good user ID. It's going to stay for you forever. OK? Macho man, no. OK? Prince of something, no. Don't do that, OK? Put geeky names is fine. If you can find something, I don't know, nerd 252, that's fine, OK? These are a nerd, that's fine, OK? So if you put geeky names, it's fine. But remember, that user ID is with you forever, OK? Choose it wisely, OK? Choose it something so when you became CEO of IPM, IBM, when you want to become CEO of IBM, they're not going to go, oh, look at this, like, you know, this guy's not serious, OK? so. Remember that. Number two, email address, primary email address on your, on your GitHub, set it to your Seneca email. Don't worry. When you graduate, you can simply change it. If you have your emails, if you have an account on GitHub now with your private email, add the Seneca email and make it primary. Why? Because you can get your student developer package. Student developer package is thousands of dollars of software that you get for free because you're a student from GitHub. Do it. If you don't do it, big mistake. OK? Next thing, when you have your uh, account created on GitHub, you can watch repositories. You can simply log into GitHub. While you're logging, come to my thing, come to my uh, repository, the notes repository, and say, watch it. By doing that, by adding watch, every time I do a modification, you get an email from, from GitHub telling the page has changed. Now you know Fardat put something new. Let's see what it is. Okay? 
and please don't watch everybody's work. Don't create spam for yourself, okay? Watching is good, but to a point that, is, that serves your needs. Don't watch some dude that you have no idea who it is, because you're going to keep getting emails. When you have 55,000 emails, the important ones get lost in it, which brings us to the next thing. I do not e answer emails. Sorry, too many things to mention. We cannot answer emails from private places. Okay, Gmail, Shmemail, you can't do that. I only answer emails to Seneca accounts. So I actually create a filter with all your emails in them, and I'm going to put it in a directory. I'll show it to you on my Outlook. It actually, I have uh, the OP244 folder at the top of everything, and inbox is like three levels down. So I see your email first. If you don't use it, Seneca email, it gets mixed up with my inbox email, and hopefully when you graduate, you're going to get a reply from me. Okay? All right. That's that. What else do we have here to talk about? I think I'm, oh, uh, the office hours all meant, oh, uh, another thing. I have Skype for Business. So you are in Seneca organization. So if you log into Outlook, okay, if you log into Outlook on a web page, there's a Skype link. You click on that one, you just type far out, you can connect to me. And right now my Skype is running. My Skype runs when my computer is on all the time. So you can, and with that, we can share screens, we can talk, we can do all these good stuff, okay? So, uh, office hours doesn't mean nothing. You can be at home, you want to talk to me, we, we, I'm at home, we go, you show me your screen, I, uh, and I'll tell you, oh, another thing that I did not mention to the other class. So again, GitHub, uh, sorry, uh, Skype for business, you can find me through Seneca directory. For those who do not use that, I created a, uh, a Skype account a long time ago when it far, far away. That thing actually is active. That Skype ID is SOS Fardad. Okay? Add that, add me to your contacts. Okay? But when you are adding me to contacts, be a professional. Just don't add me. Right? I'm an OP244 section. By the way, your section is B. B student. I want you to please add me to your, to your contacts, then I'll add you to my contacts. If, I, if you just click, and I don't know who you are, and I don't know if you're that prince from, I don't know, Nairobi who wants to give me some money so I can do something with his money or something like that. You've seen those things, right? Everybody's seen that. No? You didn't? Okay. Anyways. So <clears throat> that's that one. Another thing that you need to install on your computer, I will add it to how-tos. Team Viewer. Okay? Team view. And create it as personal. It's free. What happens is that if you need help, you call me, I take over your computer, and I do it right in front of your eyes so you can see what happens. Install Team Viewer. It's good for your health, it makes our life easy. Okay? You don't have to. Come and tell to the secretary to shout my name, and then we go to. Anyways, one last thing. One last thing, other than Team Viewer, would be would be what? Um, one last thing, other than Team Viewer, would be this. When you log in to your Blackboard, to my Seneca. You have the list of the, why it's not making it available? I keep making it available, it doesn't listen to me. Available. Okay, all right. So you are NAB, so that is uh, added over there. Why it's NAB? Because you have a joint class. Your lecture is with section uh, A, A and B are mixed, okay? That's why it's NAB, okay? But when you are in lab, you submit your work as B, and the other class submits their work as A, okay? Remember. Okay, so you are the B part of the AB section, all right? So what are we doing here? 
when you get in here, and um, I, am, I am and I will have online lectures, online reviews, okay? Where do I do it? On a beautiful software called Big Blue Button, okay? So you click over here, then you click on Tools. You see Big Blue Button over there? That's where you go. So Big Blue Button, and then you click Launch. So you're going to see something like that, online lecture. This is going to be B, so I'm going to change that to B when I have, or AB, I'm going to say AB, and AB, and save it. And now I'm going to join session, and now you can log into it from your computers. Okay, so I'll click on microphone. Don't click on listen only. Click on microphone because I want it to be two-way communication. Make sure you have a headset. Because you don't have a headset, you're going to hear lots of feedback. We don't want that. One, two, three, four, five. Come on. One. One. Echo test. One. One. Good. Good. Okay. When you hear that, it means it actually went through. Now your microphone is working. Okay. You have to hear an echo. All right. Now that's it. So we can see that Min Soo Kim is here. Hello. All right. There we go. <clears throat> so, and... I told him not to do listen only, but he did, okay? So you're not supposed to be listening. It's called microphone. And say it, Hussein, too. Where are you? There you go. So that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Don't do it now. We're going to get feedback. Don't do it. You, okay, don't do it. Don't do the microphone thingy now. Okay? So, so that's, that's what's going to happen. So that's what we are setting. And it's a good thing. You can have video, audio. I can capture my screen and display it to, to you so you can actually see my desktop, uh, slides, everything. So this is a complete tool for teaching online. Be proud. Lots of Seneca coders in here. Students like you that I hired in past five years, seven years, contributed to this. So lots of things that you see is written by students like you. And I'm not joking. Okay? And I'm not joking. Okay? So, uh, and that's why we have it. Okay? So, anyways, uh, uh, it's a good thing. You can, uh, we can have audio, video, Everything over here. See, look at me over here. Start sharing now. All those people who actually are there, they're going to see my ugly face on the, on the computers. There you go. Ta-da. All right. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, stop sharing the webcam. And <clears throat> get out of the session. So I'm going to say end meeting. Are you sure you want to end session? Mm -hmm. And that has recording uh, capabilities too, which means... When I have a lecture on Big Blue Button, when you come over here on Join Session, down here, the list of all the recorded lectures are going to be there. Okay, so you can click on it and watch it again. Okay, beautiful thing. So whenever I say we have an online review on pointers or dynamic memory allocation tonight, and I always do it between 9 to 12 at night. Okay, 9 to 12 at night. And they're all based on RSVP. You know what RSVP is, right? Responsive okay, right? So it means please respond. I'm going to create a meeting and invite you to it. And if I see only two people coming, I'm not going to waste my time. Okay? But if it's 20 people coming, then we'll do whatever is needed. I think I'm done with all the things that I have to say the first day. Um, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Anything one? Anything two? So, okay, so we are done with this, and now we are going to start. So, by the way, this is TeamViewer. You see down here? This one. This one is TeamViewer. That's the icon for it. So you can actually share your screen with others. You see that? Oh, these are the two things I need to, 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 to give me. So, so right now my password is this. So you can actually, using TeamViewer, you can actually connect to me and can, take control of my computer. But that's a random thing. I'll close it. It's gone. Finished. OK? There we go. So you give me that user ID, that ID and password. I enter it in my TeamViewer, and I have control to your, on your computer. I'm going to format your hard drive. No, I'm not going to do that. But, but anyways. So, <clears throat> are we good? 
Uh, <clears throat> let's start. Uh, so, but before starting, let's go for a break. Uh, five minutes break. It's not break to go, you know, in gym, do some workshop and come by. Work out. Five minutes, okay? Five minutes break. We'll continue. And one more thing before, when you come back. No, no, no. You don't need to go. You, you can go. Okay, I'm back. All right, everyone. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to create a project with 2019. Visual Studio 2019. It's a little bit different. Actually, easy different, right? So, um, you can do it with me, or, but you don't have to keep up. Okay, I'll tell you when to do something, okay? But as I mentioned, those three things. Your tortoise git, your potty, your visual studio. Potty is not that much needed, but tortoise git and visual studio must be running all times. So when I tell you do something, you have the, you, you can do it immediately. So I start visual studio 2019 and what comes up first is going to be this. Give me two seconds. So this is the first thing that you're going to see. Okay. This create a new project, you can simply say continue without code and just go to the environment of Visual Studio and do it like before. Go file new project or click on create a new project. Now, when you are installing Visual Studio, I mentioned specifically over there, don't say, oh, it's free. I'm going to choose all the options. Don't do that. Only install C++. I mentioned it over there and nothing else unless you are doing web programming or you are doing Node.js or in you are doing, I don't know, Android development. Not that, oh, I love Android development. Let me install it. No, that's not the thing. Don't bloat your hard drive with things that you really don't need. The installation program can be run at any time, and you can add anything you want when you need it. Don't install all the options. That's why if you actually do this right now on school computers, 55,000 different things are going to come up, which you don't need. All you need is an empty project C++. So this is what you need to find in there. Empty project C++ Windows console. Okay? You can do console app, but console app creates a Hello World application for you. If you don't know how to create a Hello World application, you're in trouble. Okay? You know how to do it. In IPC 144, hello world, printf. You know, one of those, it's done with CF, but we don't need that. We need empty projects. So I'm going to create an empty project over here now. And then click on next. And let me just minimize this. And then click on next. Make sure always you have this checked. Visual Studio is a solution based IDE, which means it creates a solution. Inside the solution, you can have 50 projects. Okay, we are writing a for loop to print from 1 to 10. We don't need 50 projects, we need one. So creating a nested directory inside another is unnecessary. We only have one project. Therefore, create, take the solution part out. We only need a project. Always check that one out. And remember I told you, I'm going to tell you later, about like writing names over there. I'm going to minus two stuff. OK. A good programmer should have as little bin, bit of OCD. Well, you know what OCD is? Obsessive compulsive disorder, which means you have to be extremely obsessive about things. OK? I know if you don't check that, it's going to create it anyway. Who cares one extra directory? Don't. Be obsessive about things. Do things the way you do all the time. When I tell you we need indentation with three spaces, it's three. It's not two. It's not four. It's three. If you are not like this, you're not going to be a good programmer. Program, by now you know, they are not forgiving things. They are extremely precise, obsessive things. You miss a dot somewhere and hell breaks loose. You get 55,000 errors just for a semicolon, OK? So you have to be that way. You have to get used to it to be organized and do things exactly as how they are supposed to be. That's why I'm being such a beep when I'm asking you to write your name over there. And if you don't write your name, I'm going to reduce two marks, OK? I want you to be exact. I want you to be precise. And I want to teach you that. 
It's not that I'm only a bad person. It's also that I want you to learn to be exact. And that's very important. Okay? Very, very important. So, please, never leave that unchecked. Then select where you want, it, where you want to create it. I want to post this for you guys to see. So I'm going to go to OP244, NABC, okay? And I'm going to put it over there. I already had two sessions for sections A and C. Now it's your turn. So I'll select the folder. And I'm going to name my project 03. It's only, the name of the project should be Workshop 3. It should be Project. It should be Insurance adjustment. It should be things that you are, you want to do. The reason that I'm going by numbers is that I am doing it lecture based so, so it gets ordered automatically through the directories. That's why I start 03 and then I put the date. So it's September 4th. And we are section B. Okay? Then I'm going to say create. And three years later, it's going to create an empty project for me with nothing in it. Now, when the project is getting created, and let's actually cre do something in this. It, it I have two monitors, so it's here. I'm going to bring it up in a second. So here it is. All right. So you have many of these things around. You have Solution Explorer, Team Explorer, Server Explorer, I don't know, Repository, Schmigli, Dingy, whatever. Close everything. Class Viewer, you might, anything that you're going to need, you can have it later on. So you see all those little tabs down there? They are cluttering your thing. You can just close it, close them up, and only have your Solution Explorer. That makes everything run smoother because everything that you open is a process that is running. If you, don't, if you close it, it's easier to work with. Now, I'm going to create a Hello World thingy myself. So I right click on source files, I'll add a new item, and I'm going to call it prg.cpp program, prg.cpp. And it's a C++ file, and this is what I have. So I say include iostream and no dot H's. I'll explain later on when next day you're coming in about all those good stuff. Okay? Make sure you have three cups of coffee before you come to class. Okay? It's going to be one of those days that I need you hyper. Okay? So, include IO stream, and then in here I'm going to say I am using the namespace, namespace STD, that is standard. And then I'm going to have int main. And in here, I'm going to return 0 when I'm done. And I'm going to say, see out. See out is an object. We are learning object-oriented programming, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is done through objects. Objects are simulated, simula a simulation of real world inside the computer. OK? See out represents your console for output. So console output object is see out. Anything you insert into it, gets inserted on the screen, OK? That's why you use the insertion operator over here. So I'm going to say insert testing 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to say insert an end line, a new line to it, OK? Now if I want to run the program, this program, I want to run it without debugging. I just want to run it and see how it works. So I'll do Control F5. How do I know how I run it without debugging? I click on debug. Start with debugging is F5. Start without debugging is Control F5. I hold Control, press F5, and three years later, it's going to compile my program, check everything, make everything sure, show me if there are any errors, schmears anywhere, and then it's going to run my program. So it's going to say testing, one, two, three. Then it's going to say use a program that is getting executed. Process number was 4392. Exit it with code. What is this? What is this? What is this? What? This is zero, right? Where did it come from? Where did that zero come from? Voila! He's my champion. Okay? 
it's returned zero. So essentially, if I said over here, return this, and I ran this program, that would have been the thing that is returned to me, not zero. Right? Correct? So why do we do that? Why a program returns something? You have to have your eye to that record, re return value all the time. If it's not zero, it means this statement never got executed. No news it is good news. Zero means nothing went wrong. It doesn't mean true. It just means nothing important happened. Program ended peacefully. If program ends prematurely, that means something called an exception happened. Exception is a bad, evil, evil thing. It means something went wrong. And when an exception happens, it fires up another exit code other than zero. So if that if your program ran perfect, but that return code is not zero, you're in trouble. Fix it. All right? Remember that. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Of course, when you say return zero, yeah. That is a good sign, okay? All right. If I want to run my program without debugging, with what, what key I have to press? Thank you, Control F5. Thank you, Control F5. You're listening. Nice. All right. So, con so Control F5, OK? Or you knew it from IPC 144. Anyway, so now I have written this thing. I want you to have it on GitHub. What do I do? First of all, I have to, I put that thing in the directory, in my magic directory, intelligent directory that I mentioned, my repository, the clone of what I had in IPC1 uh, up there in the thing, right? So I have all those things right in here. But as you see, this is not added to the repository. I just copied it in the directory, but I didn't tell to Git, hey, Git, watch this. To say git watch this is to add that repository in to add that directory and the files in it into the repository. If I open the file, I'll see a gazillion things over there. I had just a program.cpp. Oh, look at all these stuff in here. Okay? So what do I want? Why we why do we have all these stuff in here? These are all the things that Visual Studio needs to do the fancy stuff that you're doing. You never, ever push things into a repository, add things to a repository that gets regenerated automatically. It's like writing a program. They say, never store a, a value that you can calculate from others. That's a waste of space. If you know A and B, you don't, and you need the sum of the two, you don't create a variable sum and put these two, it's just, you, because you have A, you have B. A plus B is your friend. You don't need to have an extra variable for it. It's the same thing over here. I do not need to have all these things. So I need to understand what do I need to be able to carry my project from one computer to another. First one is no-brainer, your source codes. C, CPP, header files, all those good stuff, text files, data, all the things that you have that your program runs and compiles with. Are we OK with that? Number two. You need vcxproj. vcxproj is the file containing the information about your project, how it's supposed to be compiled, and what are the files in there, and so on and so forth. Number two, filters. You know what filters are? Filters are these things that you see over here. They look like directories. You see that? Source file, resource, header, etc. You see all these three over here? These are kept in filters. There are no directories in here. You see a. Uh, a uh, source files directory in here? Do you see a header files directory in here? No, there is no directory. This organization, this structure, is kept in this file to organize your code. OK? So this file, this file, and your source file. These are the minimum stuff you need, and you need nothing more. One more file you can carry around, and that's the SLN, the solution. The solution keeps track of what was the late state of your project. Like you had three files open and the cursor was standing over the things like that. If you don't bring it, it's not 
important. Still, everything is there. You can actually go and start working with it. But if you want everything to be exactly as you left it, you bring the SLN file with you. The rest, you do not need. That's why we have this beautiful, beautiful file in GitHub we call .gitignore. .gitignore holds name of things that you want to be ignored. So I'm saying for Visual Studio, anything with SDF, ignore it. Anything with user store, anything with open SDF, all these. Air, all the stuff in debug directory, gone. All the stuff in IPCH, done. Any x64 or .vs, gone. Don't bring them in. OK? Other than that, add everything. That's why when I go on this beautiful directory of mine and ask Mr. Git to add everything in that directory, what Git response is, I'm going to only add these. The rest are ignored. Are we OK with this? Now that these beautiful things are ignored and, and added and yada, 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 I'll click on OK. And they are added. But they are added, but not saved. They are added, but still the Git is not tracking them. It just knows they are about to be added. They are staged to be added. OK? So now that I said what I want to be saved, and if I bring it up, I'll see the only thing that is being supposed to be saved is this one, this one, this one, and this one. These are not, right? So I just staged it. I told to Git what I want to add. Now Git knows. Because Git knows, I can actually commit it. So what you need to do now what did I do? What did I do? Let me close this. Oh. Close, por favor. So now, Git knows that usually right after add, commit is a good thing to do. So it gives you the things that are added over here. You say, would you like to commit it? I will say, yes, please. Committing is not only committing. You have to actually tell what you are committing. So when I'm going to say, hmm, uh, prog.cpp initial commit. So I'm just mentioning what am I doing now, okay? And I click on commit and tan -ta -ta -tan. now everything is being tracked and it's saved in my local computer there. What is the next step? Send it to the master. That's why it's giving it to you. Would you like to push it? I will say yes. And I click on push, and that push thingy sends everything right up to master. Who's master? GitHub, because I cloned it from GitHub. Now I'm going to click on OK, and three years later, did not exit cleanly, which means it was not successful. Why? Because I did something somewhere else. I added a few things to the repository, and my local repository is behind the repository that is on GitHub. GitHub has some stuff that I don't have it on my local. So it says, before you add anything to me, first update yourself with changes. So now that I know, I'm going to say, pull. And I'm going to get all the changes added first to my repository. So it essentially says, readme file was changed. Now I can come over here and say, push. Now I can send things up and great success. Are we OK with this? Now if you actually go to the website thingy that we had up here, and you refresh your browser, you will see that September 4th is there. You will see that the program.cpp is over there. And now, if you have already cloned this, you could simply pull and get the changes. As I pulled and get the changes, got the changes in readme.schmigledingy, read whatever it was. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So now, I want everybody to clone the repository now. You have your Gits, right? How do you do it? Follow me, please. Open Windows Explorer. That's number thing you do. Open Windows Explorer. 
open the repository on a browser. Open the repository on a browser. Open the GitHub repository on a browser. What happened? That's why I told you to have other computers on. Here we go. Logging over there. You have Git and stuff on this? Dun, da, da, da. Okay. It's died? Yeah. Stupid. Doesn't matter if you're like these are all on YouTube. I've already done this on YouTube, so uh, you can just see when you get when you uh, when you run everything up and you you install the Git Tortoise and Tortoise Git Putty and Visual Studio. I'll come to you and I'll, and I'll tell you how to do it. So yeah, so you open Visual Studio, uh, you open uh, Windows Ex uh, Windows Explorer, and also you open the repository. Okay, click on Seneca OOP244 and then click on OOP244 NABC. The path that you are going is GitHub slash Seneca C-244200 if you don't have it open already. A browser. GitHub. <coughs> take, take to, wait, wait. Where were you before it was okay? This is where you go, and this is where you go. Okay? You should see this green thing he says, clone or download. Download. Okay? You should see that clone or download over there. What I want you to do is to expand that and click on the little thing button that you had at the right side. Nothing's going to show, nothing's going to happen. Just click on it. Clicking that is as if you copied this URL into the clipboard. If you don't want to do that, you're not happy with that, you can click on it, right click and do copy. It's the same thing. Either that or click on this button. That copies it into the clipboard. Are we all there? We're all there? Are we there? You don't log in. You go. It's an open thing. Everybody have access. Go type OP. Ah! Ah! Okay. OOP24. Uh, sorry. Uh, Seneca. Seneca. That's it. Dash. 244. 200. Go. Now in here, this one. Now you have the green one, and then you click over here. You have this on this computer, and installed it and worked in it. So you, 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 no, 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 not that, not that, just that one. You have Tortoise Kit on this computer. So if you don't, so you can't follow. You have to do it here. Okay. At you are on ABC News. That's funny. Okay, today because because we are using Git, because we are using Tortoise Git and Visual Studio 2019, if you don't have it on your computers, you can't do it on your computers. It has to be on lab computers. I, you have to have Tortoise Git and Visual Studio 2019. If you don't have it, don't waste your time on your computers. Type that URL. So you're typing github.com slash Seneca-244200, hit enter. Go into the repository. Click on clone and copy that, okay? If you haven't done it, then call me and I'll let you know how to do it. After that, now, I don't, help. Well, that's beautiful, that's it. Just click on that, did you click on that? Done, okay. Now, this is what I want you to do. Listen to me, this is what I want you to do. Open up the Windows Explorer, okay? Go on desktop, click on desktop, okay? Click on desktop, right click on a white space somewhere over here, down here, and click on git clone. Okay? So right click, and you do that, don't do anything else. That's all you do. 
took such a long time. You don't have Git clone? Did you install the, uh, the, the Git from my apps? Where is your my apps? Bring the my apps up. My apps, my apps, my apps. It should be somewhere around here. Git tortoise. You have to say tortoise. T O tor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, launch that one. Let it, let it run and then go back and do it. Okay? So you have to have Tortoise get installed. When you do that, a dialog box opens with the URL highlighted in blue. Let's be able to just this one. Over here. Click on that thing. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, cancel, cancel, cancel. Cancel. Okay, click on that one. Just click on that button at right. That's it. Now open up Windows Explorer. So one, click on desktop, right click somewhere, anywhere. Oh, you, you didn't install, uh, you didn't install the Tortoise Kit. Go to my apps, type over the Tortoise, T-O, Tortoise, T -O. Toyus, uh, T Tortoise Kit launch. After it's completed, then you go over there and you're gonna have the clone. me later yeah now okay click, okay come over here right click now you're gonna have git clone three years later four years later five years later git clone git clone clone now you have that over there. wait wait fantastic oh yeah oh yeah okay now <clears throat> okay did you click on that yeah I Windows, Windows Explorer, here it is, I have my finger over it. Okay, now uh, desktop, right click over here. So you didn't install, why nobody installed Tortoise Git? Install Tortoise Git for heaven's sake, you forgot, my ass. Tortoise, T-O, Tor, Toyus, T-O, there you go, Tortoise Git, launch, and then you can do that. Okay, guys, remember about being exact and being obsessive? When I came in before anything, I said, run, and no one did it. Bad people you are. Do it, please. Did I give you one more extra? Was it you? Okay. <laughs> Lab computer is not your own. For that, go watch YouTube. I cannot help you install now. We don't have time. Okay? But you can do it later. Okay? If, but, but I have the instructions exactly on YouTube. Okay? So, now click on OK. So, it actually cloned the repository. Okay, git clone. So, it comes up like this. Then you click OK. And three years later, you're going to see that that thing's up there. Now, now, what I want you to do... Give me two seconds. What I want you to do... Open up that repository. Listen to me carefully before you do anything. Open the third one. Right click on VCX Proj and select Open with Visual Studio 2019. Don't double click on it because it's linked to 2017 for some unknown reason. Okay? <laughs> you did that, didn't you? No, I just okay. can't do that because I'm a Mac. <sighs> I know. No, you didn't copy it. That's why you don't have it. You have to first copy it, right? So if you come over here, you download it zip. Don't do that. Oh, okay. I said click on this one. That copies. Now come back over here. Now on your desktop, right click, hit clone. Now you have it. Oh. Now you click on OK, and it's going to bring it. OK, then open up the directory after it's done, when it's finished. When it's finished, close it. Because everybody's cloning at the same time, it takes a little bit, it, it, it takes a while. 
Okay, then open with uh, Visual Studio 2019, and that's going to open up the, the thing for you. Then do Control F5, and you'll see it's going to run. Yes. What happened? What's the time? We have, we have uh, 20, 15 minutes. Deprecated APIs? What are you doing? Here. Right click. Open with 2019. Looks fine to me. Control F5. Oh, it actually breaks by the build stream like compiles. It works? I guess so, one is yeah, yeah. Uh, if you get that deprecated message, just close it. Yes. So it shouldn't work, but when I was doing it by myself, it was, uh, I think it wasn't highlighted to this. I'm not too sure if I did something. L, not one. You're welcome. All right. All right, so when you open it, do Control F9, make sure it runs. OK? Now I'm going to demonstrate to you how to debug using Visual Studio, OK? But you don't need to follow, because we have only 15 minutes, and I thought in this class would be get to get actually to that point, but you didn't, so uh, you don't need to follow, okay? Now, I'm going to add one file to this thing. You can try pulling to see how pulling works. So let me do something. Give me a second. Give me a second. A second. Everybody. I want you to go to that, repo that uh, repository, okay, that you just cloned, okay? First look at September 3rd, okay? Oh, did I put it in the wrong one? Okay, right click over here. R sorry, right, uh, right click on the repository and go tortoise git pull. So right click on the repository you downloaded, you cloned, right click, tortoise git, tortoise git, up, down, 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 that's it. And then pull. And then click on OK. That will bring a file that I just added. This is the file that you're supposed to work on on lab one. I added a few bad things to it. So I'll show you how I debug it and go through it. OK? Pardon me? Yeah, click on OK, and it's going to bring the changes that I made, which means adding that file. OK? OK, so let me open it for myself, too. So this was the one. So as you see now, a file is added, w1inlab.cpp. You see that? Uh, I'm going to open Visual Studio 2019. OK. Now, one thing I want you to do, and it's uh, important for you to do Actually, you better follow this than debugging. This is important. 
give just five minutes. It's 25 ends or 30? It ends at 35. 25, you have five minutes. Make sure you watch the video for section C that I have shown how the debugging is done. Okay, look at the end of the class. At the end of the class, I'm showing how the debugging is done. I'm going to ask you to do something on your computer here, and I want you to do that to your computers at home. Okay? Now, if you have Visual Studio open, close the solution. How do we close the solution? File, close solution. When this thing comes up, close it. So you have Visual Studio with nothing in it, with nothing in the solution. So file, close solution. And this is what you are going to do at home on your Visual Studios. So when Visual Studio is open with nothing in it, no message on it, you close everything and you have Visual Studio with nothing, no file in it. Okay? Found a suitable location. Oh, because you have the thing open yeah, twice. Open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just cancel. Anyways, watch and then follow it at home, okay? All right. Now, this is what I want you to do at home. Please, let's, please look. You can follow it over here and follow it at home. It's being recorded, so I'll post it. Click on Tools, then Options, Collapse the Environment, and go to Text Editor, All Languages, Tabs. Set the tab to be Smart, three spaces, and insert spaces. Why do we do that? Because we hate tab characters. Why? Tab characters don't work like we say a tab is four characters. That's not the case. When you say tab size is four, it actually says that tab Location is on 4, 8, 12, and so on and so forth, which means if you are on column 1, you press tab, it goes to 4. If you are column 3, you press tab, it goes to 4. If you are on column 4, you press tab, it goes to 8. If you are on column 5, you press tab, it still goes to 8. So. When you do something like this and you use tab, then move your code from Visual Studio to, say, Linux, and you open it up in Vi. On Linux, tab size by default is 8. Your beautiful indentation will go bananas. So you have to make sure that anything that you are using, VI, anything that you are using, is set to not use tab character. In the notes on the thing that I have with quizzes stuff, over there says how to do all these. For this one, you say insert spaces and you click OK. Because no solution is opened, this becomes a global setting. As of now, any solution you create will not use tab characters. And when you press tab, it's going to be three spaces. That's it. And I want to be that three spaces for tab, because I'm going to write my code with three spaces. And I don't want you to bring my function your code, yours is four minus three. I don't want that. It has to be consistent everywhere, OK? Knowing that, one more thing to say is, I have one minute. Recent projects, let's open this one. That's as good as any. If your file goes bananas, First of all, go tools, options, yada, yada, set the tab again. Then come edit, advanced format document. That formats your document properly, OK, with the settings that you have. But it's not perfect. Then you can go actually look at it, OK? And remember, be obsessive and always code in the same style. If you are putting the curly bracket after, 
Put it after, not below. If you are putting it below, don't put it in front, put it under. I am used to, from 20 years ago, to do it this way. Sorry, if you are getting my code, format it like yours, bring it down. If you want to adopt my style, sure, no problem. But I'm going to tell you, when you move to a company, they're going to tell you what the style is, you have to do it. You have no choice. Otherwise, you cannot code there. If you are the most genius person in programming, you can make billions of dollars. If the company puts the curly bracket over there, you put it over here, they reject your code. That's how it's done. If you adopt mine, fine. Next year, adopt someone else. Use your own when you're in charge. You are never, ever allowed to code in your own style, ever, unless you are in charge. Now I'm in charge. OK? That's the way it is. Thank you very much. And see you for the lecture. Friday, and remember, we have a quiz. On first, on first week's three things. OK? First week material, if you go on timeline, there are three topics. We have tests on those. We have quiz on those. OK? Hello. Who are you? Oh. That was a long time ago. Any help, let me know. Any help, let me know. Thank you. Cheers. See you later. Thanks. No.